हेलो नीट पी जी एस फ्रेंड वेलकम बैक टू द पी वाई क्यू सीरीज आई एम योर गाइड एंड मेंटर डॉक्टर अमित कुमार सिंह एंड दिस इज माइक्रोबायोलॉजी सिंप्लीफाइड सो इन दिस वीडियो आई एल बी डिस्कसिंग वन मोर पी वाई क्यू आज इन नीट पी जी एंड दिस इज अबाउट फूड पॉइजनिंग सो दिस पी वाई क्यू नंबर एट फूड पॉइजनिंग एंड वॉट वॉज द क्वेश्चन आज अ ग्रुप ऑफ टेन वेंट फॉर पिकनिक एंड कंज्यूम सैंडविचेज आउट ऑफ दैम एट कंप्लेन ऑफ नॉजिया वॉमिटिंग एंड एबडोम क्रैम विद इन फोर टू सिक्स आर ऑफ कंज्यूम ऑफ द सैंडविचेज विच आर द फॉलोइंग इज द कॉजिटिव ऑर्गेनिजम एंड टू हिस्टोलिटिका सलमो टाइफी ब्यूडियो करेरा स्टेफेलोसॉरियस सो टू आंसर दिस क्वेश्चन फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वी नीड टू नो दैट वट आर द कॉज ऑफ फूड पॉइजनिंग डिपेंडिंग अपॉन द ड्यूरेशन ऑफ इंक्यूबेशन एंड वट आर द कॉमन फूड सोर्स इज रिस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर द फूड पॉइजनिंग so in this question the duration mentioned is 4 to 6 hours and the, uh, the there is a history of consumption of sandwiches so that we have got two information first is the duration of question second is the food and third one is the symptom that is nausea vomiting abdominal cramps so the patient is not presenting with diarrhea so what could be the causative organism so if you know all this information you will be able to answer it if you don't know then you need to understand the basic so the basic for this is food poisoning is classified into three types depending upon duration of incubation first is duration of incubation between 1 to 6 hours second is between 8 to 16 hours and third is more than 16 hours and the etiological agent responsible for these are for for, for 1 to 6 hours it is staph aureus and bacillus cereus For 8 to 16 hours, it is Clostridium perfringens and Bacillus cereus, and for more than 16 hours, it is so many. I listed only four: Vibrio species, E. coli, Salmonella, Shigella, Campylobacter. Okay. So, so now in the question, it is about 4 to 6 hours. So now you know that only two agents are there: Swiss Staph aureus and Bacillus cereus. So any of one of these two may cause the food poisoning, and both of these are are in the normally uh, staph aureus is in, is in the option so the answer is staphylococcus aureus suppose if bacillus cereus is also in the option so what else we need to check now we need to check the common food sources responsible for the food poisoning so for that we will see the table so if you see the table so first of all we see the uh, for staphylococcus aureus and bacillus cereus the symptoms are same that both of them will present with nausea vomiting and occasional diarrhea okay and both of them occurs because of preformed heat stable toxin that means the toxin is produced outside the body that is why it is called as preformed okay in the food but before it is taken okay and the common food source if you see For the staphylococcus, it 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 may be meat or meat products, poultry, egg products, milk and dairy products, variety of foods, bakery products, particularly cream-filled pastries, cakes, sandwiches, fillings, which is usually cooked and left at room temperature. So the thing which is responsible for the food poisoning, especially in the case of staphylococcus aureus, is the food when it is cooked and if it is left at room temperature. so it will lead to production of the toxin and then when we will consume the toxin will lead to food poisoning so in the question the food which is mentioned here is sandwiches so again the answer is confirmed that the causative organism for the given case is staphylococcus aureus if instead of sandwiches if they would have mentioned that they have taken fried rice then For the same symptom and same duration of incubation, the diagnosis will change from Staphylococcus aureus to Bacillus cereus. Okay, what else we need to know apart from this? The toxin which is responsible for Staphylococcus aureus food poisoning is enterotoxin. Enterotoxin, and this toxin may be A to E, and then from G to L. and this toxin is basically a neurotoxin and it acts by stimulating vagus nerve okay and leads to vomiting so the vomiting is not because of local effect of bacteria but because of effect of toxin on autonomic nervous system and this toxin is 
सुपर एंटीजन ऑलमोस्ट ऑल द टॉक्सिन प्रोड्यूस एफाइलोकस और यस आ सुपर एंटीजन ओके एंड आई हैव ऑलरेडी डिस्कस अबाउट द कॉमन फूड सोर्स रिस्पांसिबल फॉर स्टेफालोकस और यस बट दिस फूड सोर्स गेट्स कॉमनली कंटामिनेटेड बाय कांटेक्ट विद पर्सन हार्बरिंग द इंट्रोटॉक्सिन प्रोड्यूसिंग स्टेफालोकस और यस इन देयर हैंड और देयर नोज सो बाय कांटेक्ट दे में ट्रांसफर द बैक्टीरिया फ्रॉम देयर area of colonization like nose or hand to the food and thus later on when it is cooked and left at room temperature it will produce the toxin this bacillus cereus also occur by uh, food poisoning also occur by preformed heat stable toxin but one more thing we need to know that this bacillus cereus can cause two types of food poisoning one is emetic and one is diarrheal and this emetic toxin the duration of incubation is 1 to 6 hours so this is emetic emetic type of bacillus cereus food poisoning and it is because of this preformed heat stable toxin and this emetic toxin is cerulide and it also acts by stimulating the vagus nerve so the mechanism of action of both this enterotoxin produced by staphylococcus aureus and this emetic toxin produced by bacillus cereus is same but the food source is is diff is different it is fried and cooked rice so what will happen this bacillus cereus usually exist in spore form it will contaminate the rice and when the food is prepared it will increase the temperature and then this spore will gen germinate and when it is kept at uh, at room temperature sup suppose for serving it will release the toxin into the food and then it will lead to food poisoning but the good thing about these two is the self limited illness so both the food uh, both this agent causes food poisoning of self limited or self resolving type okay it will dissolve within maybe 2 to 3 days okay apart from fried and cooked rice this uh, this bacillus cereus food poisoning can also be caused by pasta pastry and noodles okay now For 18 to 16 hour again, there are only two agents: Clostridium perfringens and the diarrheal type of Bacillus cereus. Clostridium perfringens and diarrheal type of Bacillus cereus. The symptom is now more diarrhea and vomiting is very rare. So just opposite to that of the duration uh, incubation period of one to six hour. There, uh, nausea and vomiting are the primary symptom. Diarrhea was rare. Here, vomiting is rare and diarrhea is the primary symptom. And both these. food poisoning occurs because of heat labile toxin okay so what will happen the food will get contaminated by the heat resistant spore produced by both of them and once the food is consumed inside the small intestine this will this spore will germinate into the vegetative form and then it will liberate the heat labile toxin okay and then thus leads to food poisoning and that's why because of this the the duration of incubation is longer the heat stable toxin which is responsible for clostridium perfringens food poisoning is cpe that is clostridium perfringens enterotoxin okay and which type of clostridium perfringens produces this enterotoxin mostly is type a so type a clostridium perfringens is responsible for most of the cases of food poisoning and the common food source are beef poultry legumes which is which is consumed when they are incompletely cooked incompletely cooked beef poultry legumes and the gravy is which may contain the toxin and how it will not get affected because they may be stored cold and then warmed up for for the meal okay and then this bacillus cereus this diarrheal type is caused by again enterotoxin 
and the foods responsible are meat, vegetable, dried beans, cereals, soups. You see another name, soups, pudding and sauces. So there in case of this emetic we saw apart from fried rice, pasta, pastry and noodles here we saw soups, pudding and sauce apart from this normal foods like meat, vegetable is mentioned in almost all the common food sources. Then, so for that you need to see the characteristic uh, food for that uh, poisoning. Okay. For the incubation period duration more than 16 hours, so there is a huge list. So I will just uh, uh, help you to ease, ease out how to remember it. <laughs> so you see, Vibrio two species are there. One is Vibrio choleri and one is Vibrio parahemolyticus. So, if you see the, com the food source which is responsible for both the infection are seafoods. So, seafoods if you see is mentioned in the question, then the chances are there that the question is about Vibrio. So, then you need to see the symptom. If, it, if the symptom says it is watery diarrhea, then it is Vibrio cholera. If it says dysentery, then it is Vibrio parahemolyticus and the mechanism for this watery diarrhea in case of Vibrio cholera is obviously the heat labile toxin known as cholera toxin. Okay, and for this Vibrio parahemolyticus, it is invasion, it does not produce any toxin to cause food poisoning. Now, then, if you see the two E. coli, this introtoxinic E. coli and introhemorrhagic E. coli, the introtoxinic will lead to watery diarrhea, however, this introhemorrhagic will lead to bloody diarrhea. So this is the difference between these two E. coli. One toxin producing E. coli will leads to watery diarrhea by producing the toxin that is either LT or ST. And this hemorrhagic uh, e. Coli, uh, type of E. coli will leads to bleeding. That's why it leads to bloody diarrhea. Apart from bloody diarrhea, what it will lead to? It may lead to hemolytic uremic syndrome in children. Okay, and it is because of virocytotoxin. The food responsible are raw milk, raw vegetables and apple juice and another characteristic name. Raw milk vegetable you may see in another other agents also but this apple juice you cannot see elsewhere. Okay. Now for this salmonella and compilobacter jejuni if you see the symptoms are similar that is inflammatory diarrhea and the mechanism of is invasion and also the foods are almost similar that is beef, poultry, egg, dairy products here also poultry and raw milk you can see. So, this salmonella and compilobacter leads to inflammatory diarrhea and mechanism is invasion. And this shigella, although mechanism invasion, but it leads to dysentery. Shigella is, all, is popular to know, popularly known to cause bacillary dysentery. So, shigella will cause dysentery and the foods are responsible are potato, egg salad, lettuce and raw vegetables. Okay, so once again, I will uh, just highlight how to remember it in a, another way. So, watery diarrhea is caused by Vibrio cholera and E. coli that is ETEC, Vibrio cholera and ETEC which both of them produces similar toxins CT by Vibrio cholera, LT which is similar to CT by ETEC. This EHEC, Shigella and Vibrio leads to dysentery. And then EHEC produces virocytotoxin, Shigella and Vibrio will cause by invasion. Okay. And this salmonella and Campylobacter leads to inflammatory diarrhea and both of them causes this by invading the intestinal epithelial cells. So it is by invasion. Food source for Vibrio cholera is seafood. For intrahemorrhagic E. coli, raw milk, raw vegetable and apple juice. And for this salmonella and Campylobacter, it is poultry and raw milk, egg, dairy product, beef. And for Shigella, it is potato, egg salad, lettuce and raw vegetables. So, it is not that important. What you need to know is the symptom and the mechanism of action for these uh, like Shigella and Salmonella Compilobacter. Okay. For the shorter incubation duration, you need to know the food sources also to identify the agent. Okay. So, these are the various agent responsible for food poisoning. So, now it is very easy. Now, you know that in this case, the agent which is causing the food poisoning is Staphylococcus aureus. So, I hope this video will be helpful for you to understand and to, uh, to understand the food poisoning and it, it, will, it will help you to answer all the questions related to the food poisoning. Okay. 
सो टेक केयर ऑल द बेस्ट सी यू इन नेक्स्ट वीडियो